Hey everybody, I'm Uncle Carl. Welcome back to Twin Moons Tavern. Uh, quarantine Kitchen, day 15. Uh, this is not what I normally do for my food videos. This is the whole Quarantine Kitchen series is obviously in response to COVID-19. And this is a daily, uh, just as much as a, as a vlog as it is a cooking show. And I try to do things which are available to the public on this given day and um, maybe sitting around in your pantry and relatively easy to do. Before I get any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to uh, Christy, Rebecca and Walt and anyone else who is currently under a uh, isolation waiting for test results or have been tested positive for Corona-19. Um, we're all rooting for you and um, you know, we hope that you get through this real quick. So just keep that in mind. That being said, I'm gonna do something a little bit more fun today. Very simple, very fun. Um, it's been brought to my attention that alcohol is an issue. Uh, that with the bars closing down, now I don't drink, but with the bars closing down and clubs closing down, um, getting your hands on alcohol is becoming a little bit more difficult. So I'm gonna show you how to make some really, really basic uh, wine. Uh, in this particular case, hard cider. I've been home brewing for decades and quite frankly, I'm pretty good at it. This is not a typical recipe whatsoever, uh, but this is meant for what you have probably sitting around in the house. It doesn't require any special ingredients, any special equipment. Uh, and it takes you like just a couple minutes to start. It does take probably about two weeks for the fermentation process to happen, but you know, the actual work involved is negligible. I've been wanting to do a homebrew series uh, and I will probably get to that at some point in time, but I, I don't see me starting it anytime during uh, all these shelter-in-place orders. Uh, it's just too difficult to get specific supplies. So, that being said, let's get to it. And before I actually get to mixing all of this, uh, the basic concept of fermentation is yeast eats sugar, turns sugar into alcohol and CO2. It doesn't have to be raw sugar. It could be sugar in all its forms. There's sugar already in the apple cider. Uh, but we're gonna add a little bit more sugar. The more sugar that is available, the more alcohol that can be produced. Also, the limit to alcohol being produced depends on the strain of yeast. There's a lot of different strains of yeast. Some of them yield uh, higher levels of alcohol than others. I am using baker's yeast. This is not brewing yeast by any stretch of the imagination. But it's not gonna be as good as if you used a brewer's yeast, but this is gonna be much more accessible, I think. Vanessa likes her booze a little bit sweet, uh, and I'm not sure how much sugar this yeast will eat and turn into alcohol, so I'm gonna add extra sugar to it. Um, I don't know if it's gonna to be too sweet or if it's gonna be just right. This is something that I haven't done in a really long time. Actually, my first alcohol I ever made was wine with grape juice and the same exact process that I'm doing now and I made it in the uh, wall locker when I was stationed in Korea 20 some odd years ago. So I'm going to add about a third a cup of sugar to that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the cider in here so I can mix it up and get it in back into this bottle relatively easy. Now, ideally you wanna use everything that is sanitized. Um, all the different wild bacteria in here can alter the taste. Being that this is not any fine-tuned recipe to begin with, I'm not terribly worried about it. You'll see if I do a series on home brewing later on, I'm much more serious about it. But just make sure everything is clean, not necessarily sanitized. If you have the time, sanitize it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add that back in. 
I'm gonna take my packet of baker's yeast and just drop that in there. Put the lid back on. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a good shake. This is gonna mix up the yeast all around and more importantly, it is going to aerate the cider. In the beginning parts of this, air is good for the fermentation process. And then we're gonna go ahead and take this off. Now, if you remember, I said it produces alcohol and CO2, you know, the gas. And what happens is the gas builds up and builds up and builds up. And if I just put the cap on here, eventually it's gonna explode. So you would put an, some kind of one-way air valve. Now, in brewing equipment, these are very specific things. This is a very DIY at hoc solution right here. So I'm just putting a balloon up here. And what will happen as the CO2 is produced, the balloon's gonna fill up and fill up and fill up. And then you can just like once every once in a while, just kind of go ahead and burp it to the side and the CO2 will escape, releasing the pressure. So really that's all there is to it. We're just gonna let this sit for probably 10, 14 days. We're gonna put it in some place that is uh, dark and uh, cool. A closet is perfect. You know, at first check on it every morning and every night uh, and to burp it. And as the process goes, the balloon will fill up less fast and just burp it as you need. Once that balloon stops filling up, then you're done. Go ahead and recap it, put it in smaller bottles, what have you. Uh, the amount of alcohol and the sweetness is gonna have a lot of different variables in it. It depends on how sweet the juice was to begin with. If you add any sugar, how much sugar you add and the strength of your yeast. So I can't predict that uh, based on, I don't know what you're gonna be using. So it is gonna be definitely a hit and miss kind of thing. It isn't gonna be any high dollar wine. It's gonna be maybe the quality of something that you might pick up at a gas station. You know, if you really want that bottle of wine or cider in this particular case, you know, that's, and that's your only option. Well, there, there you go. And you get the, the plus of making it yourself. All that being said, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you need, if you want more detailed information or an actual good recipe, I will let me know and I'll work on that. You know, as always, Wash your hands, maintain those social distances. Do not go outside if you do not need to. You know, above all else, please be kind to everybody, each other. It's gonna be rough out there, uh, but totally manageable. All right, we'll catch you here next time. Take care, peace, and stay healthy.